At Stampin' and Storage, we understand that your craft is an important part of your life. And we understand that sharing your craft with others builds a bond of community and friendship. In this episode of Crafted Spaces, we're going to meet a crafter who is clearly devoted to her hobby. So as she designed her studio, she not only provided space for all of her supplies, she also prioritized making space for her to share that passion with others. Let's go take a look. Hi, I'm Deborah Rector. Welcome to my Crafted Space. I thought it was outrageous and I'd never heard of anything like it in my life that someone would want to spend all this money on a craft room. When we originally talked about the room, I said, you know, at some point we have to come up with a budget. The room is quite large. Every day of my life is a new request. And I go, gosh, I'm not really qualified to be doing this. The rest of the house is basically support facilities for our craft room. I wanted it to be a space that would be difficult to leave and that people would say, I'm ready to move in. I have my bag packed. Well, Deborah, thank you for having us into your studio. Well, thank you for coming. I really appreciate you making the trip. It's a beautiful space, and we're excited to learn a little bit more about it. Um, but before we dive into this, I'd just like to learn a little bit more about you. Tell us about yourself and kind of your paper crafting background. How did you get into crafting? Well, I actually started scrapbooking and card making at the kitchen table. I think just like a lot of people begin. There was a, a famous movie, Romeo and Juliet, it starred Len Whitting and Olivia Hussey. They were newcomers to the movie scene. And I just fell in love with the movie and I created a scrapbook all about this movie. I still have the scrapbook to this day. So that's how my scrapbooking love started and it eventually evolved into card making. Designing the studio was a long process. There were a lot of moving pieces to it that constantly changed. What I learned from my previous studios is how to become better, how to become more efficient. And by that, what I mean is I started going through my tools and the items that I had and really looked at what I was using. And unfortunately, I found that there were a lot of items that I wasn't using and those have long gone. Uh, I followed the uh, stamp and storage craft organization 30 day challenge. I took it to heart and purging was not easy for me. It became an emotional thing. It was hard because I realized that items that I had never touched, I was just giving away. But it was a bit cathartic after a while and it caught on. And now I have what is, I feel, an efficient streamlined process. We were very interested in this area as a whole town concept. We started working with Lou Oliver. He is the designer of Pinewood Forest. Every home in here must meet his approval. It's a town that is very pedestrian oriented. It's very environmentally focused. Uh, the, all, all of the houses and the townhouses at Pinewood Forest will be on geothermal power, which the rectors are on. And the whole um, philosophy of Pinewood Forest is to provide a new town for makers specifically, makers slash storytellers. So it's very interesting that the rectors chose this particular project, probably not even knowing that. And they ended up being uh, one of the first adopters. And um, uh, so we're proud to have uh, designed their house and, and uh, their house uh, is focused around entertaining. It's also focused around this craft space. Um, and I think it's uh, brilliant to be able to entertain and do crafts together, uh, which really bonds people and creates a much more lively social scene than just having dinner or sitting in the living room. What did you think when you heard about the craft room that she wanted to create? I thought it was outrageous. And I'd never heard of anything like it in my life that someone would want to spend all this money on a craft room and entertain in it at the same time. So Deborah and Pete are very animated. Uh, there's no shortage of personality there. And 
they have friends over, they have friends over often. And so their, their lives are very social and very interactive with their community. So when Deborah told me she wanted to do this big craft studio, I was, it was a learning process for me because I thought, what could you possibly need other than a two-car garage to do your crafts in? And she, she told me about her process, about her scrapbooks, about her cards, and the idea that she would invite friends over to join in these activities. And I thought it, w I thought it was completely wonderful and wondered why we didn't see more of these. They wanted um, a place um, to get away from Pete, perhaps. So um, it, uh, it's not that he would be excluded all the time, but he, there, there could be some exclusion. When we originally talked about the room, I said, you know, at some point we have to come up with a budget, you know, for this room. So I made her a, I made her a, an Excel spreadsheet, and I said, what are the things you need to put in a room? You, you, you need cabinets, you need, you know, rugs and chairs and furniture and stuff. What, what, what do you think that's all going to add to? No clue. So I said, well, let me help you out. Let's say... Let's, let's just say cabinets are going to be so much, and let's make a budget. And the budget came up to, you know, a substantial amount of money. But, you know, the delta between just putting a room here and putting this stuff in, you couldn't count the floor and the ceiling and the paint, because, you know, you're going to have that anyway. Um, uh, but, you know, cabinets and, and uh, storage stuff and partitions and a 17,000-ton tabletop workspace uh, that's granite. Took 15 guys to bring it up the stairs. And so we arrived at a budget. Over the course of six months, she so abused that budget and disregarded it that it became almost a work of fiction. It was like a four-page Norman Mailer novel, uh, you know, totally fiction. Uh, I said, where are you on your budget? Uh, no clue. I said, well, I'd like a full accounting in the next 48 hours because, you know, you're, she, she, I think I've spent all the money. I said, well, then you're done. Hmm, no, I'm not done. Uh, I've got a lot more to buy. And I said, well, you, 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 you know, there's not an infinite amount of money here. Um, already you're to the point where every card you make based on standardized, uh, acceptable accounting practices should sell for something around $135 a card. And um, she informed me that she wasn't in it for the money, she was in it for the joy of it. And um, I, at that point, said, whose joy are we talking about? <laughs> because... <laughs> I'm not getting the same warm feeling out of this that you may, um, which of course didn't stop her at all. So um, my involvement was, you know, purely uh, a sideshow, uh, a minor inconvenience for her. And she forged ahead being the strong woman that she is, doing exactly what she wanted to do. when there were bare walls, nothing on the floor, and we took blue painter's tape and taped out outlines of every cabinet, of where I wanted the work table, how it would flow when I was sitting at the table, what things, what items would I reach for first? And I wanted those items to be very handy. Other items that I don't use more often, they went into my work room. I have to say it came out beautifully. And uh, I've, I was left to inform the kids that uh, there would be no inheritance. But, but I think, unless I'm missing something, <laughs> they're gonna, they're, they're gonna, they're gonna, inherit, they're gonna inherit about 20,000 cards <laughs> of, 
of spurious celebratory nature. There'll be some Christmas cards. There'll be Valentine's cards. There'll be, but they'll have enough cards to you know basically give all their friends no money, but a lot of cards. I cannot take him anywhere. I can't. <laughs> I thought that this would be pleasurable having you be a part. Uh, you crank yourself up, don't you? <laughs> We really focused on our lifestyle and what we enjoyed, what we enjoyed together and what we enjoyed separately. Not only my hobby, but my husband has hobbies. So in designing our new home, we, we put a lot of thought into what would make him happy in sustaining his dreams and his hobbies and what would make me happy. And then ideally, something in the middle. What could we share together? which is how my space evolved because my previous craft studio didn't allow an opportunity for him to come and blend with me. Didn't have a television if he wanted to watch a football game. There wasn't even a chair for him to sit in. So this space is something that involves the both of us. And it was very important for me after 30 years together, we still are friends, we still enjoy each other's time. It was important to both of us to be able to have a space where we could be together while I was crafting, while I was doing my own thing, and he could be with me and we could be conversing, we could be watching television, listening to music, reading a book, whatever. But it was important for me to involve Lou in how we lived and what our lifestyle was so that he understood what was important to us as individuals together and in creating our space. We decided that in order to make the space comfortable, not only for me and Pete, but for my guests, my friends, there were certain elements that we needed to bring into the room. I wanted to make it so that friends or guests could easily come in the front door of the home, either take the stairs or an elevator, right outside the studio, have direct access to it. Once we were in the studio, there's really no reason to leave. There are five main areas that to me seemed like they were important. First, we have a kitchen area. Even if you're not here crafting, this is a great place to hang out. She went on to explain to me that they would have a kitchenette in the space uh, where they could prepare lunches or dinners. Um, have some drinks perhaps, um, sit around a fire in a sofa grouping and maybe talk socially and talk about projects. So this space that was really over a three-car garage became a whole, um, a whole world that she could invite her friends over. We designed the space to be very comfortable, uh, regardless of what you're doing. You know, nice, cushy, you know, big leather chairs and swivel, you know, rockers and a, you know, fireplace. And We have speakers in the ceiling that we can listen to music. It, it really brought about the whole space by combining what would be easy for my friends and my guests to have access to the room. If you're not comfortable in a space, um, you know, it's not an enjoyable place to be. It kind of harkens back to the old quilting bee idea that you can, you know, go make a quilt, but then a lot of it has a social value. So the area we're sitting in kind of serves as that. It would be the, the main room where when we have guests stay over and the guest rooms are right around the corner, this is the room that guests would come to in the morning, wake up, feel free to come start the coffee pot, have a cup of coffee, sit here in front of the fire. They're not crafters, they're not interested in the rest of the room. So this was a very important focus, not only just as part of the craft studio, but for guests who come and are non-crafters. The rest of the room are divided into other uh, important key elements, which is the workroom and the paper storage and then the work table itself. Well, the idea behind the work table, that's probably the easiest element in the room. I wanted it big. In my last craft studio, I had an old kitchen table that we used that six people used to sit around and it was cramped. In order to get around through the room, you had to actually ask someone to stand up so that you could move around. When I had this space and I knew I had the space to make a, a work table, I wanted to make it as big as I could. 
It is a 12 by 12 foot U-shaped work table and it fits seven people very comfortably. The space for each person is staggered. So you have about a three foot workspace where you have your chair pulled in. And then on the other side of the table, that space is free. You're not facing someone else. So a three by three gives you a nine square foot uh, work surface, which is plenty of room to spread out. Plus, it still seems cozy enough where people can converse and get up and walk around and see what other people are working on. The desk itself, I put a lot of thought into, and I belong to a Facebook group that I actually asked for their input. I asked for their advice. If you could have a dream studio or if you went somewhere and you wanted to craft, what things were important to you? Uh, a comfortable chair was number one. Um, having a plug-in outlet at each workstation was very important for people. A place to plug in your electronic devices. So if you're working all day and you're looking up uh, ideas, um, then you could certainly plug it in. You could use a heat gun. They're all concealed in drawers. Uh, just having usable space, having it be a hard surface floor so that chairs could easily roll. Chairs that were adjustable depending upon someone's height. That also seemed to be a very important element. Having a work surface that you didn't have to worry about staining. If you had paint, uh, if you were working with other mediums, um, inks, alcohol inks, it's easily cleanable. It's a hard surface granite. Uh, I do have mats at each of the stations. If the mats get dirty, they're easily cleanable. They're self-healing mats. Having adequate light was another key point. So it's things like that that I found very helpful for people responding to my questions, providing input, uh, and I used just about all of their ideas. I even went on that Facebook group later on, posted a couple pictures of my studio in progress and said, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your input. I want you to know that your input was important to me. A lot of people said that an elevator should be included because of people with mobility issues, not only for my friends, but for my husband and I, as we age and we continue to live in this home for many, many happy years. So that element of it was very important. So when you come in the house on the main floor, it goes directly from the outside into the main area without a stair. You can come in with a wheelchair, you can go directly inside the house and to the right, get into the elevator, come upstairs and come right into the craft studio. Doors were made especially larger in case people needed walkers or wheelchairs, even the elements of the work table the areas where there's a chair is wide enough and is tall enough to support a wheelchair. Not all of my friends are mobile. Some of them are older than me and uh, most are my age. So it's getting equipment up the stairs with people who are less than mobile to begin with. Having a space that uh, has a lot of elements to it that allows us not to have to leave the room really does increase efficiency and creativity uh, because I don't have to leave the space. If I, if I want to get something to drink or if I have to um, you know, use the, the restroom, I don't have to go very far. I'm right here. As far as putting in a bathroom, uh, that just makes all the sense in the world. I mean, these, I've seen her go nonstop for 12 hours with a, with a group of women. And, um, you know, there's intermittent toilet flushes as well as, you know, coffee making going on and everything else. So, and they never leave the room. You know, at a certain point, we even discussed maybe putting a shower in because she could go 18 hours easily making cards. Um, and unless I had a space to come and talk to her occasionally, you know, just to check in and make sure that she's still okay, you know, I might not see her for a whole day. I mean, she gets pretty intense. Having friends over, I think, sparks creativity uh, because uh, we're all working independently on different projects. And 
someone may be working on a card, someone may be working on a scrapbook layout. Um, I even have friends that come over that are photographers, not necessarily paper crafters, that like to sit with their laptop and they use Lightroom or Photoshop elements and they're, they're editing their photos. And But we're all mingling together, we're all talking. Um, it's fun to be able to get up and walk around the table and see what other people are working on. Having people together and talking about different um, uh, elements of your crafting that inspire you or bringing new techniques to the table. Certainly people bring things all the time that I, I never even heard of or never even thought of. Uh, so I think that that's a, an important part of getting friends together and sharing. When friends come over, I like to have uh, allow them access to tools that they wouldn't be able to bring with them, such as carrying around a big shot is not easy. So I have several big shots that I keep here, not only for teaching classes, but for friends to use. Uh, and I have other tools that are easy for them to use. I have a Cricut uh, that they can use for die cutting. If they want to use electronic cutters, I have a Gemini. I also have a Big Shot Express. These are things that are not easy for people to bring. They're not portable. So in designing the space, I wanted to make sure that there were enough tools enough comfort for people to be able to come over and spend the entire day. I wanted it to be a space that would be difficult to leave and that people would say, I'm ready to move in, I have my bag packed, I'm coming, I'm staying. That's fine, I have rooms that you can stay in. Seriously, it's just a great, easy place to have fun, spend all day, be at ease, and not have to worry about leaving the room for any reason. It's really important when you're doing a um, something like a craft studio. You want to use the space and you want it easy to get to, but you also want to psychologically detach a little bit from your house so that when you go into the space, you're clearly at work. It doesn't mean that when you go work, you can't have fun. You should have the most fun sometimes because it's going to keep you motivated to uh, keep doing what, what your heart tells you to do. That old saying, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. That's right. Yeah, you, exactly. With all creatives and with all passionate people, you love your work, sometimes to the point where it almost kills you, you love it so much. So you can have fun, you can do 10 and 12 hour days, but you have to get away from it. So I think having a, having a wonderful space to go to, but be able to close the door and say, okay, enough, enough creativity. I have to rest now. In my old studio, if I would get a little lonely and I'd want to spend time with Pete, it would be coming up the stairs, it would be warm, the fireplace would be there, uh, my husband would be there, our puppies would be there. It's like, oh, I just don't want to go back downstairs again in my little corner of the basement. Uh, so it did stifle creativity where I think this really brings it out for us um, and him as well. This is a very important part of our marriage. This is where we spend the most time. This is where we like to be happy. It's our warm place and uh, he does find it hard to leave. It's This is our cozy spot. He's an important element of my life and he's my best friend so I want to spend time with him. So having this area is key. Well Deborah clearly prioritized community and friendship in her studio. And we hope that this episode has not only given you some great ideas to improve your crafted space, but also inspired you to build relationship through your craft. <laughs>